Daphne here from Steam Design Lab to show you how to build a paper bead marionette. This design was inspired by a skeleton marionette project found on the Monmart Art Channel. I'll provide a link to that video in the description below. Their design is fantastic, but I wanted to do something that would be simple enough to be made by a child and that would require only a few inexpensive, or better yet, free materials. This video is also for a skeleton, but if you can stitch up a few simple clothes from an old t-shirt and modify the head to make it a little less ghoulish, you can turn this into just about any regular marionette character you can think of. Here are the supplies you'll need for this project. And these are the tools. I also printed the skeleton drawing available on the Monmart art site to use as a guide. Any skeleton drawing would have worked, but I thought the size of this one would be perfect for my finished marionette. Since I want to make my skeleton about the same size as the printed skeleton drawing, all I need to do is line the cardboard tube up with the top of the rib cage and mark the location of the rib cage bottom. I cut a straight line from the edge to the mark, then all the way around the tube. Then I just adjust the tube segment until its size closely matches the rib cage on the drawing and seal it with a piece of masking tape. I will provide a list of all the dimensions I used for my skeleton parts later in this video. To make it more realistic, I contour the bottom edge by trimming it with my scissors. I also trim some of the excess cardboard from the center. Next, I'll make the pelvic bone. The cardboard roll is perfect because it already has a slight curve to it. Cut through the tube so it can be laid flat, then sketch the shape. It should look a little like a heart without the point at the bottom. Next, you'll cut a piece of cardboard for the spine. This will attach the rib cage to the pelvic bone, and it will also help to support the skeleton's legs later. I wrap it around a marker to help form it into a tighter tube shape, and then apply a piece of masking tape. It should be rolled tightly enough so that your beads won't fit through it, but large enough so that your cord will. Now it's time to connect the spine to the rib cage and the pelvic bone, being careful not to seal the end of the tube with the glue. You'll need to make some paper beads to act as the bones. I use the skeleton drawing as a guide to determine the length of each bone. Then I cut a couple of 8.5 by 11 sheets of paper into strips, one for each bone with a width that matches the bone lengths I just measured. To make the paper beads, you'll need a small plastic straw. This is called a Collins straw, and it is only an eighth of an inch in diameter. Just place the straw along the short edge of the strip and start to roll. 
When you get to the end, slide the bead off the straw, press to straighten the edges, and allow the paper to loosen just a bit until the hole size is just right. The idea is to end up with a hole size that is close to the size of the holes in the pony beads. Add a little white glue along the edge and press to seal. You'll need to make five two inch bones for the legs and shoulder, four inch and a half bones for the arms, and you'll also need to make four one inch pieces for the hands and feet. I'll show you how to do that next. Starting with the strip of paper that's one inch wide by eight and a half inches long, follow the same process as before. Roll it around the straw, removing the straw when you get to the end. Press the edges to align them and allow the tube to loosen just a bit. This time, you will need to pinch the tube together on one end to flatten it. Apply glue to the edge to seal it. Make four of these. Now that you've got the body and the paper bone beads, you're ready to start putting it all together. Begin with two pieces of quarter string. I'm using crochet yarn because that's what I had on hand, but you can use anything that's fairly strong and will fit through your beads. Begin by tying the strings together at one end. I wrap a small piece of tape around each of the free ends to help keep them from fraying and to create a stiff needle-like end to help me push it through the beads. Begin by stringing one pony bead onto each string. You won't see these beads, they are just to help hold the leg strings on the body. Pass the open ends through the top of the spine tube. Now you can start beading your skeleton's legs. On both cords, you'll start with two beads on each string to create the hip joints. Then a two inch paper bead for the femur, a plastic bead for the knee, and another two inch bead for the lower bones. I use a slightly larger wooden bead for the ankle and heel, but you could probably get away with using a regular pony bead here as well. Add a flattened bead for the foot with a flattened side on the bottom. I use a straw to help feed the cord into the beads. Making sure the beads are pushed up on the cords, tie a knot at the end of each cord.
Pull the knot just slightly into the ends of the paper bead feet, then apply a bead of hot glue and squeeze the end shut. Now glue the feet to the front of the ankle beads with hot glue. Trim off the extra cord. Glue the lower leg bones to the top of the ankle beads as well. For the arms, start by trimming the top of the body to make a little notch where each of the shoulders would be. This creates a seat for the 2 inch bead. Now it's time to assemble the arms. You'll need four one and a half inch paper beads for the arms, two flattened beads for the hands, and one two inch paper bead to act as the clavicle bone between the shoulders. Cut a piece of cord, then add a piece of tape to the threading end and tie a knot to the other end. Slide a flattened paper bead onto the cord with the flattened end first. Slide all the way to the knot and use hot glue to secure it. Next, you'll slide the beads onto the cord. These will create one arm, go across the shoulders and back down the other arm. Be sure to alternate the plastic beads with the paper beads. The plastic beads act as the joints, the wrists, elbows, and shoulders. I'll show you the complete layout at the end. The last bead is the flattened paper bead for the hand. This time, slide it on so that the flattened part is at the end. Add a knot and hot glue to seal, then trim the ends. My string was a little short so it was kind of tricky to tie the knot. Next time I'd make it a bit longer. My skeleton is really starting to come together. For the head, I'm using a ping pong ball and a piece of cardboard for the jawbone. 
If you're making a regular marionette, you can skip the jawbone and just use the ping pong ball. Or use a large wooden bead or maybe even an empty eggshell that's been coated with varnish. I have a video that shows you how to prepare an eggshell that I will link in the description. Just like we did with the pelvic bone, you'll want to sketch the jawbone shape onto a piece of cardboard tube and cut it out. Then glue it onto the ping pong ball. To attach the head, start with a short piece of cord. Tie it onto one of your plastic beads. Then glue the bead to the bottom of the ping pong ball. I slid on one more bead, but I would suggest adding two beads instead. This will become the neck. Tie the cord around the center 2-inch paper bead on your arms. Trim off the extra cord, then tack it in the very center with a bit of hot glue. Glue the same paper bead onto the body at the shoulder notches. The basic form of the marionette is complete. In the next video, I'll show you how to add the face and rib details and add the strings and controls. This diagram gives the finished dimensions of the body and the cords. Be sure to cut longer cord lengths so that you have enough to work with. This one shows the lengths and locations of the beads. For more information on this project and others, check out our website at steamdesignlab.com.